Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we're going to be looking at the Mississippi Land Company and the Royal Proclamation of 1763, and we're going to be doing it through the eyes of Founder George Plater. And the reason for this is Plater's decision making says a lot about the oncoming revolution. Now in brief, the Mississippi Land Company was one of several companies at the time that was charged with purchasing land in the Ohio Valley, which is modern Ohio and parts of Kentucky and Indiana and West Virginia, Pennsylvania, that region around the Ohio River. The uh, Mississippi Land Company was one of several companies buying this property, and the goal was to sell it as colonials went to the frontier and colonized the area. Now, Plater invested in the Mississippi Land Company along with such notables as George Washington and Richard Henry Lee and Francis Lightfoot Lee and and uh, dozens of other founders. And while we talk about the coming American Revolution, and we like to just say no taxation without representation, there were like a lot of reasons. I sounded like a valley girl, I'm sorry. There were, in fact, a lot of reasons why the American Revolution took place. And one of the major ones was this area in the Ohio Valley. Because these companies and these owners of this land that wanted to sell it Many of them fought in the French and Indian War, and the reason they wanted to fight in this war was they wanted this land. Heck, when George Washington kind of started the Seven Years' War by uh, trying to politely ask the French to leave that land and failing miserably, <laughs> um, the reason he was out there is that was his land that the Mississippi Land Company wanted to sell. So. After the French and Indian War, also known as the Seven Years' War, was concluded, the king issued the Royal Proclamation of 1763. And the reason he issued this is he wanted to halt tensions between the Native Americans and the colonists. And the proclamation had the proclamation line that more or less ran the course of the Appalachian Mountains. And the king said, colonists, you cannot go over these mountains. This is Native American territory. In hindsight, it seems like a pretty reasonable maneuver. It seems very friendly to the Native Americans, but at the time, as you're the colonists, first of all, most colonists expected people to be moving west because there was always an influx of immigration to British North America. And on top of that, these wealthy speculators had bought all this land to sell. So it was the wealthiest colonists who were really getting uh, uh, pushed back the hardest, and those are generally not the people you want to mess with. So in the end, by, you know, the proclamation was again in 1763, and by 1767, George Platter, today's subject, uh, or Plater, I believe, George Plater, four years later in 1767, stopped paying his dues. He just stopped investing in the company. And it makes a lot of sense. The company hadn't, had, hadn't even had the opportunity to be profitable in four years. You, you, seemingly blowing your money for no reason. Because again, 1767, hostilities wouldn't break out for the war for another eight years. So he was probably right to not be throwing his money in anymore. But I bring it up today because I wanted to get the point clear that land west of the Mississippi, I'm sorry, land west of the Appalachian Mountains, up more or less to the Mississippi, the ability to purchase and sell and settle that frontier property was almost, if not more important to many Southerners than the tax problems that were going on throughout the colonies. Don't get me wrong, the Southerners were very unhappy about the taxes too. As I said, there were many reasons that this war broke out. But one of the most important ones, and not, in my opinion, spoken about nearly enough, is this property in the Ohio region. Uh, again, that is more or less how the First World War, which was the Seven Years' War, broke out. So, to get back to Plater, he had bailed on his friends, and you would think they would hold that against him, but it turns out they didn't, for several reasons. First of all, during the Revolutionary War, he sat in the Continental Congress for several years, and he actually helped craft the Articles of Confederation. He didn't sign the document, he left before it was signed, because it took Maryland a while to get on board, uh, but he did help craft it. And then he went back and he was, uh, as a Marylandier, a Marylandier, a Maryland citizen, uh, which I forgot to mention, uh, as a Maryland citizen, 
he went back and served in the state Senate for over a decade. And he ended up being president of the state Senate. And during this time, he joined again with George Washington and others uh, to form a company called the Potomac Company because he still wanted to invest money. And the Potomac Company is a fairly well-known in Revolutionary War circles, a company that George Washington more or less started this one. And the goal was to make the Potomac River more easily navigatable. Nav navigatable? Navigatable. Well, easy to navigate. I can't do it today. I can't talk proper. Um, and they successfully did this. Uh, but again, it was because they wanted to be able to go further out because people were further out. And they wanted, and trade was coming in from these new frontier lands that were getting settled. Uh, and then Plater, after several years as president of the Maryland State Senate, was actually elected to the fourth, I believe, fourth governor, sixth, I apologize. He was, he was elected as the sixth governor of the state of Maryland. Uh, unfortunately for him, he got ill and passed away just a few months into his term, which is probably why we don't know a whole lot about him. He did play more of a minor role in the revolution, but the reason I brought Plater up today is because his his particular situation and the way he handled dropping out of this investment that he had been invested in for almost a decade speaks wonders about the frustrations that were happening to even the lesser known founders in the buildup to the revolution. And I think it sheds a lot of light on not just their feelings, but on the idea that it wasn't just taxation without representation. They were upset for a whole laundry list of reasons many of which I will get into future videos, which is a great segue for you to hit this button up here and subscribe. Click my logo here and subscribe for my future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like. I know it's a little bit longer than I usually talk for more abstract people like this, but we went a little off the founder today and went a little onto the uh, Mississippi Land Company. So thank you for watching. I will come back to you tomorrow with a brand new video and a different founder. Thank you.